So now what Robert's going to do is he's going to give you a good idea on how they actually attack in the wild. With the death roll, you've got a big piece of meat on the end of a rope, and you can demonstrate how a crocodile essentially kills an animal that it's pulled into the water. He's really interested today. The crocodile will spin an animal off its feet to drown it very quickly, and then it can go about consuming that animal. Ooh. So he's got that right. Yeah, go to your left that way now. Yep. By pulling on the rope, Robert is mimicking a struggling animal and then hopefully getting the croc to death roll. Here he goes, here he goes. Go, 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 go. get him. Yeah. Go that way. This way, yep. That's it. If the crocodile violently head shakes and you don't let the rope slide through your hands, you will go flying into the water with the crocodile. So this is what's going through my mind, and that was really the only point where I was nervous. He's gonna go. Here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. Now, come back this way now real quick, that's it. Good boy. And again. They are just so incredibly big and strong. So when you're on that end of the rope, it's difficult even just to get that little tug for them. You can be tugging as much as you can, and to them it's just like a little tiny jiggle. So you really have to work hard for it. Yeah, good work. Awesome. Shall we cut it? Let's yep. cut it. All right. You hang on to it too, right? Yeah, good work. It's different, isn't it? You've got so many people moving around, standing their feet, shifting in their chairs, and he can sense vibration really well, even in the water. So you really have to be very, very careful. There you go. There you go, it's up to you now. Hey, good boy. Good boy, what do you reckon? There you go. You're all right. He's gonna... It's so good to see them in the water. I mean, they spend a lot of their time swimming and in the wild, so it's great for them to be able to stretch out and swim. Wes is younger than me and has been here longer than me. He was Steve's best friend and knows so much about snakes, so it's really nice that he and Robert can do this together. Dad always loved snakes, but he never got to swim with a reticulated python. Snakes aren't just good at crawling along the ground. Some of them, like Gloria, can also swim. So she gets to explore underwater, and it feels really good. And in the wild, they would seek out the water to help them shed their skin. So the reticulated python grows to be the longest snake, and they'll live to be about 40 years old. It's a pretty amazing experience to be diving down underwater and just watching this snake moving through like poetry in motion. It's absolutely magical. This is actually a really big moment for me personally because this is the biggest croc I have ever head jumped and it's all about timing. Everyone, everyone come in, everyone come in. Let's, okay, I'm, whenever you are ready, Robert, I'm happy. All right, jump team ready? Yeah, yeah. Go! Get that tail straight. I need more help. We're good. We're good, guys. We're good. OK. All right, I just need some lift here. I've got to tape this mouth up. Whoa! Hang on. You all right, yeah, Robert? Good, good. Yeah. Great jump, buddy. Thank you. Even though we've got all these people on him, we're holding him down, we're using all of our weight and all our strength. He could, he could still give us a bit of a go. Now comes the point where we're actually going to put him into the box. Yep, coming through. And this is a very crucial point. Okay, okay, that'll do. 
Oh, you big dinosaur, you. If we could just lift up. Uh, Toby's just looping the last few ropes on his head to make sure his jaws are secure. When we jump off of him, we're going to put the front of his head in the box and um, get him in there. But he is such a powerful croc. He's a really big boy. Shaking. Yeah. Oh, he's on How it. intelligent. Look at that. As soon as he saw that movement, he was right on it. Oh. Instead of trying to pin that head down, that's not great for the snake. By funneling him into that little tube and keeping him in there, we'll be able to get in and do all of our tests. However, Ooh. as soon as you lay a hand on the snake, that's when they're really on high alert. A snake of that size, their strike range is absolutely huge. You don't know what the snake's going to do. Go around this way. Good boy. It's OK. You know, he's strong, he's fast, he's on the board. I've got to be ready to move, you know? You've got to kind of be a half a second in front of them. Go around this way. I mean, I'm within the strike range. You know, he knows. He doesn't want to go in that tube. They all give off body language. From the subtleties of the way they move their head to the way they look at you. And that's the art form of dealing with big venomous snakes. Okay. Okay, you can grab a bit of it, Robert. Yep. Come in, guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big boy. Okay, let's get him over there. That was awesome. Whew, I'm just <sighs> speechless. That was so cool. Wes did an amazing job. <sighs> My heart's going. Hey, Sam. Well done. Very good. How was that? That <sighs> was awesome. Out in the wild, they live in river systems and estuaries, constantly digging around the substrate, looking for different places to hide, and that really wears down those fingernails. But here at Australia Zoo, they don't have to be constantly struggling to find food, and that means that their fingernails grow a lot quicker. There you go, big boy. Oh, you're all right, mate. Hello. Robert's going to be shielding Dr Sam and myself from the turtle. We'll trim up the nails and we'll just make sure that they're in prime condition. Should be quick if, if that could just come over slightly. Just further, yeah. Lightning is a big boy. He's between 80 and 90 pounds and he's going to be a lot to handle. Okay, we'll start with the back foot. Yep. As long as I stay clear of his mouth, I should be fine. You're all right, Lightning. You're all right, mate. It is a bit nerve wracking having half an inch of plastic between you and his mouth, that's for sure. I got him. He's good. He's good. When was the last time you guys trimmed them? Around about six months ago. Yep. And it's not necessarily the length that is the biggest problem. It's when they start to... Curl? Yeah, curl yeah. Them back a little bit. Yep. And then you start to get lesions on the bottom of their feet because they spend all their time flat on the bottom of the pond. Yeah, you're right, Lainey. That's good. I mean, we're not seeing too much curvature of any yeah. of these nails, really, are we? Yeah, that's pretty good. And he's getting cranky, yeah, so I reckon let's feisty. pop him back in. All right. Good job, Lightning. Should we put him back? Yep. As soon yep. as you're ready. Go. There you go. Take that off. Perfect. Away you go, Lightning. Oh, good boy. Oh, that was nice, awesome. Mate. Good job. <laughs> good capture. Wow. OK, so I just got a call um, that we've got a wild snake in one of the animal enclosures here. And so it's really important that we get him out of here for his safety and for the animal's safety. So. From what I've heard, it's a carpet python, and it's in this enclosure. We've got this is where often our roving animals go, so we've got to get in here and get him out quick. All right, here he is, a little harmless, non-venomous carpet python. It's the reason why we don't just let him be, is because right now we're in one of our animal enclosures, and if we have any little birds or any little animal that he could maybe see as a potential food item, then he'd definitely have a go. You can see here now, he is in the perfect S position. So he's pretty much ready to strike if you were to get anywhere near him. And so that means it's going to make my job a little bit challenging. He's very cute, isn't he? Hey, you're right now. You can see those strikes that he's putting on. That's just that sort of defensive mechanism because he doesn't know that I'm trying to rescue him. So you're all right, mate. You're all right. I know. So what I'm going to try and do here, he he's probably is going to bite, but that's OK. 
That's okay, I don't mind if he bites me. Yeah, see, that's a bite there. You're all right. I know, you're all right. All right, so we've got him now. You can see they've got amazingly sharp teeth. And that actually, you're all right, I know. And that actually makes for actually a, a less painful bite. You're okay. So he's a little bit distressed now. This is a completely wild snake. We've got to get him out of here. So, uh, Luke, can you get me a bag? Yep. Get quick as you can. You're all right, you're all right, you're all right. And he's in. Tie it up. 